Well, here we go. You guys had said something about maybe wanting to see a tutorial on heat treating. So, uh, we're going to see what we can do about that. There's the blade that I'm working on. That's uh, Frank the Bunny's blade. Um, the first thing we're doing is we're letting the forge come up to temperature real slow. Just kind of letting it all soak up the heat and get to a real even temperature. I, I could blast it up and bring it up faster, but I don't want to go beyond, you know, a little, a little higher than what would be critical temperature for the steel. So we let it come up slow and that way everything soaks up real good. You know, I'm, I'm hoping to do this before it's completely dark, but at the same time I usually do it when it's dark, so it's kind of a little trade-off for the, for the camera here, but I have obviously the, the knife, I have the forge, we have our magnets to check for critical temperature, and my turkey fryer quench tank here. So that's pretty much the whole deal. I'll be back when, uh, when the forge is up to temperature. Well, while we're waiting for the forge to come up to temperature, I thought I might uh, go through my little workspace here and show you just how little you need to make knives and swords. I have a forklift tine anvil, a stump with my water bucket on it for wet forging, a few hammers that are being replaced in the next day or so, propane tank, extra propane tank, torch, Forge made from a paint can. You know what that is in there? A butter knife's just in there to gauge critical temperature, so I know when to cool things off and get ready to harden my uh, knife we have waiting here. Messy table, vice, quench tank, and this here is a straightening anvil. It was made out of the other piece of this forklift time. If you can get a hold of a forklift time, get a hold of a forklift time. Believe me, it's worth, I mean, it's worth its weight in gold. Fan, stereo. And that's it. That's all it takes. You don't really need much else. Now I got files and hand tools, a grinder, belt sander under there. Not really much to it. That's really all it takes. So here we are, looks like our forge is up to heat, see I've blocked off the back end to help keep a more even heat from end to end, now we're going to take and uh, we're going to put our knife in there. Really need to invest in some tongs but you know I, I get by without them for so much that it's just not a cost that I want to spend right now. Got that in there, let it sit for a bit. Once it comes up to critical, it'll be into the quench it goes. Okay. Okay, I got my daughter taking the video here. Out. Check the magnetic. Almost. She's real close there. You gotta make sure that the whole entire edge is non-magnetic. If any part of it is still magnetic, you'll get hardening in some areas and not in others. It's really kind of a pain, you know. This little forge is good for a three, four inch knife blade. If you're real good with passing it through, you can do a little bit better, but you know, I'm not real good at that. I haven't had a lot of practice, so. Check it again. Still magnetic.
you know, when I go, I'm going to go from the forge, the magnet, into the quench. So, that's going to be pretty quick. And that should be real close to it. I got some quick work to do here guys, so that'll be that.